And like I said in, in Mark, it says, torn open to him. The Greek word, right, is, uh, um, uh, it's S-C-H-I-Z-O, schizo. Schizo. And what it means is, it means that something, right, that has been secured in place has been torn or ripped open. Okay? It has been it has been ripped open in a way that can never be put back together. When the word of God says that the heavens were rent or torn, ripped open, what it's saying is there is a new release of the heaven of God coming to earth that never would have taken place if Jesus wasn't baptized. So when Jesus is being baptized, he is opening up a new way for God's glory to flow in the earth. That's why baptism for Jesus is the start and the launch of his ministry. The spirit of God comes on him, rests on him. And in that moment, we hear God speak over Jesus. And what does he say? Two things. This is my beloved and I'm well pleased. Amen. The Father, listen to this. The Father is speaking to the identity of Jesus. Amen. Right? Not for Jesus' sake. Jesus knew who he was. But for the sake of others who would hear and to know and to understand that Jesus is the beloved. And God is well pleased with him. Right? And so he gets led out into the wilderness. I want to talk for a few moments before we end about the lies of identity that the world tells us. If we don't know who we are, right, if we don't have our identity rooted in Christ, how many understand we will be led in all sorts of wrong directions how many have ever gone down some of those paths, paths in, your, in, in your life? <coughs> so th quickly, three lies that the world tells us about identity. Number one is I am what I have. There, there's a, a, um, a priest named uh, Henri Nouwen who uh, used to be um, a professor at uh, Yale University and well-known, highly educated, intelligent man, wrote many books, one of them being The Wounded Healer, which is one of the greatest books you would ever want to read about the fact that God wants to use you to heal others even in your own pain. Right? The Wounded Healer. And he lays out these three lies that the, that the world tells us about ourselves. Number one, that I am what I have. If you believe that you are what you have, you'll be chasing after all sorts of wrong things to help you feel validated about yourself. Now, God will bless you, and God will put things in your hand, right? But if your identity is wrapped up in those things, those things will... Whew. The world is broken and lost and dying because it doesn't know who God created it to be. And so they're chasing after every other thing to try and build up a sense of identity, a sense of understanding of who I am. You are more than what you have. Or said another way, you are more than what you don't have. Amen? Have you ever been around somebody who tried to make you feel less than because of what you did or didn't have? Right? Right? But when we are built up in our understanding of who we are in Christ, those things don't matter to us anymore. Amen. This gentleman that I told you about, and, uh, Henri Nouwen, he walked away from this prestigious life. And you know what he did for the rest of his life? He went and served disabled people. Lived the rest of his life serving disabled people, pastoring them, shepherding them, loving them. Why? Because he recognized that he was getting wrapped up in all the wrong things. All right, so lie number one, I am what I have. Lie number two, I am what I do. I am what I do. 
How many times you meet somebody for the first time, right? Walter, I'm guilty of this. I just asked you this in the other room. One of the first questions you ask people is, what do you do? Right? What do you do? If there is anything in us that assigns people to different hierarchies and levels and categories based on what they do or what they don't do, how many understand there's still work that needs to be done inside of our hearts and lives? Amen? But the Lord, I mean, the, the world loves to put you in categories, doesn't it? That's right. Loves to assign your worth based on what you do. Yeah. Right? There will be people around you who knew what you used to do and will try and identify you now by what you used to do then. Right? right? And we can stay in there and say, you know what? I am not what I used to do. I am not defined by what my life used to be. I am not defined by the choices I made back in the past but I am defined by what the Lord says about me. I am defined by the words that God speaks over us. I am what I have. I am what I do. The, the third thing is, I am what other people say about me. How many of you made choices in your life to do things that you know you never even wanted to do simply because you were worried about what somebody else was going to say about you? And so the point is, we are not defined. Our identity is not built in the answer to those things. Our, identi uh, our identity is defined by, you ready for this? The word that God speaks over us. And here it is. The word that God speaks over us is the same thing that he spoke over his son. You are the beloved. And God is well pleased with you. Just let that settle into you. You don't have to prove yourself to God. You don't have to do another thing for God to call you the beloved. You don't have to earn that love. You don't have to try and maintain that love. It is there and present for you. Guess what? You are the beloved when things are going great, and you are the beloved when your world is falling apart. We cannot, we cannot fall into this false understanding that if things start going wrong, well, then God's upset with me. Right? Remember when the disciples came to Jesus and the man was born blind, and what was there? Well, who, who messed up? This guy or, or the parents? Somebody messed up here, right? That was just the understanding. Well, something's going wrong in this person's life, right? So somebody did something to deserve it. And if we're not careful, we fall into the same things, don't we? When things are going well, we feel like, oh, God is, God is smiling on me. The rug gets pulled out, and we're like, oh, what happened, God? What did I do? What did I do? And God sometimes is saying, you didn't do anything. I'm setting you up for something greater. Amen. And listen, when our identity is anchored in Christ the right way, whether we're in a state of order or a state of disorder or eventually cross over into a state of reorder, every step of the way we know that the words that God spoke to Joshua, he's speaking to us. I will be with you wherever you go. Amen? Amen. So when our identity is right, and it's anchored to him that I'm the beloved, even when the rug gets pulled out, you know what? We stand there and say, all right, God, I'm your beloved child. You're going to do something for me. I'm your beloved child. You're going to work this out somehow. I'm your beloved child. You're doing something behind the scenes that I can't see. I'm your beloved child, Lord. There's an answer coming. Lord, I'm your beloved child. You're going to part a sea for me. 
Lord, there's a, there's a way coming that I can't see, that I can't anticipate, I can't understand. But Lord, I know that I know that I know you are doing it because I am your beloved. And you are mine. <laughs> That's what the Lord is doing in us. Pulls us out. To put us into a new place. So some of you right now, you're on that journey. You're on that journey right now. You might be in that place of total disorder right now. Where you just feel like everywhere you turn, things are, things are just messed up. Things are just messed up. You know what God will do for you? He'll change things like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Remember how I said a few moments ago that the first time I spoke this message, you know, I was at our church. Everybody loved me there. I spoke this message about order and disorder and reorder. I went home. I felt so good about myself. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh, God, you know, you're so good, God. And look at what happened. And it's so well received. And everybody, oh, God. And then the next day I get this email and I'm like, wait a second. You're telling me, Lord, now I have to walk through the thing that you just had me talk about? <laughs> like, because I'm, you know, I was in a good place, Lord. Everything was really good place. And now <laughs> the rug's pulled out. That was almost... Two years ago, it'd be two years ago in June, that I got that message. And I will tell you the truth. I'll be honest with you. I haven't talked about this anywhere, all right? So this is our secret. <laughs> As it's being broadcast for everyone to see. But anyway, <laughs> it's our secret. There were dark days in that journey. I have four kids. Lord, what am I what am I going to do? Four kids. Right? One's about to graduate high school, go off to college. Dear God, I know I don't look like it, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but dark moments of Lord, what is going on here? And a long period of time where where I had no answers whatsoever. Right? Spent the last year and a half split my time between two different organizations trying to just keep just keep things going because those are the doors that the Lord opened in those moments. Right? Do you know what just happened on Easter weekend? Remember when I said things happened like this? Both of these places that I've been working at for a year and a half, now you, like working at one nonprofit organization is tough work. <laughs> it's tough work. Trying to work at two and keep it straight, everything that's going on, trying to be present for everybody, and then be present in your home, and be present at your church, and be, you know what I mean? My family and I went away, like, for, for spring break, and just before we left, I said to my wife, I said, I, I don't know how much longer I can do this. You know what I mean? I'm burned out, I feel exhausted all the time, stressed out, bringing everything home, right? Being rough on the kids, being rough on the dog, being rough on my wife. <laughs> I'm not a perfect person, sorry. I mean, if you think, <laughs> I'm just going to tell the truth, all right? And I'm, I, I, was just, I mean, it was, I, I, it was, I'm like, I, I just don't know how much longer I can do this. Within 24 hours, both of those nonprofits offered me full-time position. In 24 hours. In 24 hours. Not, and, and neither one of them knew what the other one was doing. It was just, God will open up a way for you. It wasn't even a thought in my mind that that was going to happen. And God just does things. And I'm saying that to say to you, wherever you're at right now, God has you. He has got you. He has got you. He's got you. He's got your family. He's got your children. He's got your spouse. He's got you. And he will do things for you that you could never 
even imagine. And you know why he does that? So that you stand back and the only thing that you can say is, but God. Only God could have done this for me. Only God could have pulled off what he has done. Only God could have navigated me through this journey. Only God could have opened up this Red Sea for me. Only God could have kept me along the way where I didn't lose my mind. Only God. So that we can praise and glorify his name. And isn't that what Jesus said in response to those disciples? They said, why was this man born blind? And what did Jesus say? This happened for the glory of God. What you're going through, what you're facing, it will in the end all be for the glory of God. Amen? It will all be for the glory of God. It will all be for the glory of God. You know why? Because you are his beloved. And he is well pleased with you. Amen? Amen. Let's stand on our feet together. Can we, can we pray together? So listen. Uh, thank you.